welcome to Theology Thursday, a weekly podcast dedicated to cultivating theological conversation amongst millennials. I am your host, Ryan Mock. I am your co-host, Connor Grubbs. That was really good. Thank you, Connor. I mean, actually, that's not your real voice, though. You actually typically sound like Owen Wilson, but you really you really got into character for that. Yeah, I know. I just like the first, the first few seconds, I really like to... Just bring it home. Bring, yeah, bring it home. Just like, this is it. This is our podcast. Please listen or don't. Well, I mean, we are listening. That's the thing. Uh, I'm talking. Yeah. Hopefully. And and, and our Coco host, Johnny, will be here eventually. We're just waiting for him to, to FaceTime in. We had to go ahead and start, but uh, he, he wasn't ready, even though we had this conversation last evening. Like, so he slept through the episode last week. Just straight up slept through it. That's why he wasn't on on here last week. And then I was like, okay, tomorrow, 10 o'clock, put it in your calendar. You know, that's when we record now. It's an adjustment for him, because we used to record on Wednesday nights. Now we record on Wednesday mornings. And uh, and he said he was going to put it in his calendar, but then he texts me at 10, which is when we're supposed to start recording, and he says, I need seven minutes to pee and grab my coffee. Hey, and seven I, is the number of completions. Well, that's so. true, but you should start seven minutes before 10 so that you're ready when it's actually supposed to start, is my point. It's okay. He'll be here any minute now, I I think. So how does that work? He's going to FaceTime us, so what what is the listener going to hear? The listener is going to hear his voice. We've done this before, Ryan. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. We know what we're doing. Right, you, you've, you've just never had uh, 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 somebody phoned in to the show before with you on. We only did it once. It was when Mitch was on. So are they going to hear it through the mic, or is it going to like go through the computer? Johnny, here we go. And <gasps> and he's right there. Look Johnny! at him. Johnny! Look at him. Hello, he's... boys. <laughs> um, so, and I know, Ryan, you, you haven't seen Johnny in a while, have you? No, it's been so long, Johnny. I heard I heard you had like a baby or something. Yeah, well, I didn't really have the baby, but it is my baby too. And yeah, she's here. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. Okay. That makes I yeah. that makes me so happy. Congratulations, Johnny. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, Johnny, welcome welcome to the show. Um, we're we're happy to have you here. It's, it's good to be back. Yeah, it has it has been a while. How how is your baby? She's good. She, you know, she sleeps, she poops. Man, I do all those things too. <laughs> wow. Yep. <laughs> That's really cool. So but it, it is cool to have a kid. She's she's awesome. She's really funny, and it's just fun. She make jokes. Does she make jokes? Yeah, you said she's funny. <laughs> no, she's just funny, like with her facial expressions. She's not really like very communicative yet. <laughs> So she's so she's a stand-up comedian, is what you're saying? No, that's really not at all. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what you said, but it's okay. Um, your face is frozen, but it's a beautiful face, <laughs> yeah, so we're I, just gonna kind of let it. <laughs> it's just as long as the audio, nobody can see my face. Yeah, I mean, but we can. We can but it's just your face. I don't see your mouth moving or anything. Yeah. It's entertaining. So uh, we were just about to jump into sub points, Ryan. What? Well, you actually prepared a sub point this week. It's been a while I, since you've done that. Am I allowed to have two sub points? <laughs> Whoa, dude! You're next level. It, can one of them be saved for next week, or do you want to share them both today? I kind of want to share them both today. Okay, we'll let you do that. All right. Sub point number one. Twenty One Pilots just came out with a new album called Trench. You should listen to it. It's really good. Um, they do claim to be Christians, and if you listen to their music, they do have Christian values, especially their older music. You could hear Christian themes, and so all their music's good. You should listen to all their music. I think. I'm yeah, kind of I really boy. think of Christian values when I hear that Heathens song. Well, you gotta listen to other music too. But <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm kind of a fanboy for Twenty One Pilots, but just I did not know too. this, Ryan. Yeah, I am total total you, fanboy. You do not strike me as a Twenty One Pilots oh, fanboy. Yeah. Usually, that's I reserved. I would not have known that either, but I'm so glad. I love Twenty One Pilots. Typically, yes. that's reserved for uh, yes, Johnny, angsty middle school girls. But apparently, you guys as and well. Me and Johnny. <laughs> Wow, it, it that's... Give you, give you a, a high five that's through the creepy. Yeah, high five. They had already released a few songs from that album on Apple Music, so I've been listening to those, like, three songs. Whoa, you guys are dorks. Yeah. What's happening? And then on, on, <laughs> it came out, the whole album came out on Friday, so oh, it's been out for a few oh, days. Right. So, listen to it. It's really good. 
All right, yeah, that's my first sub point. Okay, I probably won't listen to it, but go ahead. What's your second right. sub point? <laughs> You're just missing out then. <laughs> my second sub point is that I'm going to be a substitute teacher for the Pinellas County uh, public school system. And uh, so I already applied. I got a call back. They're like, hey, you seem cool. Um, and so today, just today, this morning before I got here, I got fingerprinted. So that's like legit you know this is happening so so here's my question for you what, are you going to keep your other job i am in addition to substitute teaching the, the game plan right now at at freedom square they have me working two night shifts and just so just two so i'm not working a lot you know i'm only part time there so um i figure being a sub i could work three days a week that's five days total working and i should be making good money again that's great, yeah. Ryan. Nice. I'm really happy for you. Good for you, man. Yay. Johnny, do you have a sub point? You know, um, not really. My life is mainly consumed by, you know, I'm back to work now, which is great. I love, uh, you know, getting ready for a youth retreat coming up. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much like changing diapers and, you know, holding my daughter and, you know, working with teenagers. Um, I don't have much time for anything else, and therefore – not much else to say okay well I that's mean, awesome you know good for you uh yeah I'm well, happy, man. The, the good news is that ryan had two sub points to make up, yeah, for, yeah, made up right. for it. your your lameness um i actually <laughs> i actually have two as well um so we're gonna doubly make up for johnny's lameness wow um my first is is similar to yours it's just it's not like anything really important or special it's just some some not music that came out that i like but actually a movie that came out that i really liked that i did not expect to enjoy i expected it to be absolutely terrible venom i was not expecting that movie to be any good it's one of the most bizarre things we've seen in cinematic history uh, you know, Marvel gets the rights to Spider-Man back, and you think Sony has finally learned their lesson, but then they're like, let's make some Spider-Man spinoff movies without Spider-Man. That sounds like a horrible idea. Like, I don't want to see a Dr. Octopus movie, <laughs> you know, without Spider-Man, or a Green Goblin, like, that just doesn't make sense. But yeah. this is what they announced, they're doing a whole villain Spider-Man franchise without Spider-Man. And frankly, I don't think it's going to work as far as spinning off into a whole franchise. But for this one movie, if you can just embrace the goofiness of it, it actually is a very funny, entertaining movie. Yeah, I didn't really care for it. Um, there were there were funny parts. There were entertaining parts. Overall, I, I had low expectations for it, and it met my expectations which were very low, so that's not really saying much. See, it exceeded my expectations, because mine were extremely low. But also, I think for for a lot of people, it wasn't what they expected. They announced it as like this like gritty horror movie, and it was not that at all. It was a comedy. It was like a buddy comedy about Venom and Eddie and their friendship. There were a few little intense parts, though, I will say. Yeah, I mean, it has those elements, but it wasn't, you know, that kind of a movie. And then my other sub-point is just, you know, that we, our prayers and everything go out to everybody in the path of Hurricane Michael. Um, because it's gearing up to be a pretty intense hurricane, hitting mainly the panhandle. Um, yeah. And so our prayers and thoughts go out to everybody in the path of that storm. Amen. I remember, uh, remember Irma last year. For... Yeah, this is a whole different animal. It's like it's category yeah. four and, and could still be that at landfall. Yeah, for us, yeah. when Irma finally hit, it, it was, was, kind it was of... one. It was a category one when it hit us. Now it had hit other countries pretty hard. Yes. Yeah. And they're right. still recovering from that. So, yeah, and uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on that on our on our good Floridian friends. In the Panhandle, and and elsewhere, wherever else the storm is going to be affected by. Yeah. So, our theme for the month uh, revolves around the Reformation. Yay! Yay! Which uh, th- this is why it's interesting to have Johnny back on the show because uh, Ryan and I our our theology is is very reformed, heavily influenced by the reformers. Yeah, you don't you baptize know, babies though, in their so. teachings. Yeah, I don't, nor will I ever. Um, 
in, in just, wait, just saying. Let, let, let me let, let me clarify this. You actually are supportive for the baptizing of babies. Yeah, I am a pedo Baptist. All right. Um, I don't remember you mentioning that on our baptism episode. No, I'm pretty I sure do. I did. Yeah, I did. He did. You talked about how yeah. he likes to baptize babies. Yeah, our listeners are well aware that uh, Orion wants to, to sprinkle babies. I have to keep my daughter away from him so he doesn't like sneak <laughs> baptize her. Johnny, you must do uh, it. <laughs> I, I, I'll, Ryan, we'll, we'll sneak in one night and we'll we'll sprinkle Zoe's forehead. Yes. <laughs> John, Johnny will never have to know. But okay, I know we've already had this episode, so this is totally a rabbit trail. But, but just let me clarify: you recognize that baptizing an infant does not ensure their salvation, correct? No, it does not. No, it does not ensure we, their we salvation. Discuss all of this. On the no, podcast. I'm just listen. I'm, listen to okay. the baptism I, 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 episode. I, I, I'm just trying to double check because it's been a while right. since we did that episode right. and. And and uh, what what does Tradewinds teach on that? Tradewinds adheres to the Westminster Confession of Faith, which teaches, uh, which adheres to infant baptism, um, and unto salvation. Not unto not unto salvation. Westminster doesn't believe in that, um, but baptism as a sign of the covenant. Okay, all right. Um, well, and and that's one thing that is good to know. I didn't know that the Westminster actually didn't teach bab- infant baptism unto salvation because some churches do teach that right that, that, that is false and it, and, and it is concerning but okay right. you can you can sprinkle babies if you want yeah. um, what we're really here to talk about though that was total rabbit trail um, is the Reformation last week we talked about the forerunners of the Reformation kind of the events leading up to it and now we're here in, in the meat of it right what happened um, what was the Reformation. Once once it got here, what was it? And and kind of the key figure that we're going to talk about today is a man by the name of Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King Jr. No, that's a different <laughs> movement. That is a completely different movement, although an equally uh, important and influential man. Uh, Martin Luther. Oh, that guy. Yeah, Martin Luther. Martin Luther was, um, he was a German man, correct? Yeah, he, he was white and Okay, I mean, that, that's not what I was asking, really. Um, but Martin Luther, what was the thing that he did that kind of kicked off the Reformation? The event that we actually recognize on Reformation Day, October 31st, which is the reason we're doing this series in October. Okay, so the, the event that changed the world, Martin Luther nailed some pieces of paper to a church door. The 95 Theses. Yeah, not just any papers, the 95 Theses. So what exactly were the 95 Theses? Okay, so the 95 Theses were a list of statements, accusations, uh, critiques of the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope himself. Uh, So he said a lot of things in the 95 Theses against the Catholic Church. Uh, they're mainly they're mainly used as discussion points. He's, he wanted to have a conversation, so these were these were mostly for him were discussion points. But but really, it sparked a whole revolution that he would never would have expected. Right. So his goal wasn't necessarily to like offend the church. It was just to start a conversation. Yeah, he wanted he wanted the church to change. So like, okay, so if if this had happened in modern times, this was like the equivalent of him like tweeting or emailing the church. E- emailing to, the church to, to start these conversations. Yeah, he he would post a, a long tweet. He post ninety five tweets about yeah. what's yeah. wrong with the Catholic. If this church. was happening today, it would be the ninety five tweets. That's that's right. <laughs> now that's pretty awesome. So yeah, little did he know that um, after doing this, and I believe it was fifteen seventeen. That's right. He would be brought um, before. Uh, the Catholic Church uh, to answer for his what they thought to be heresy. Yeah, a, a whole year later, October 15, uh, 15, 18, that's, that's 1 plus 15, 17 for you. Um, he, he had a meeting with one of, one of the, the church's cardinals, and, and they're like, hey, you have to recant what you said about us. And he's like, you know what? You I'm not going to gonna recant. You have to, you have to delete the tweets. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're not going to be deleting the tweets. And he refused to delete the tweets. Actually, he's like, everybody needs to retweet these tweets. And so he yeah. was he was excommunicated. That's right, he was excommunicated. 
His Twitter account was shut down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, just like if you tweet mean tweets at, at Donald Trump, you will be shut down. This is what happened to Martin Luther, right? So now he is an outlaw. Yeah. And what's incredible about it is, is Ryan, did that stop him? Not at all. That didn't stop him. He went just crazy mode, but in a good way. Good crazy. So what do you mean by he went crazy mode? What did he continue to do? Well, he continued to preach the gospel um, that we're saved by faith alone, uh, or by grace alone through faith alone, and he gained followers, and uh, he, he continued to write stuff. The cool thing is that just a few years prior, uh, the Gutenberg uh, printing press was, was invented, and what the what the printing press allowed the people to do was to print papers, uh, print print literature out uh, instead of handwriting everything. And so um, by doing that, I mean the ninety five theses were, were were reprinted and spread out across all of Germ- Germany in within two weeks, and, and that, then o- with over Europe in just a few months. Right, and that's not the only thing that. Uh the printing press had to do with with Martin Luther and his influence because he also uh, translated the Bible into German. That's right. Which at that to that point it had only been in Latin because that's the holy language of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And and part of the reason that they kept it in Latin is because they didn't want the the church members weren't allowed to read the Bible yeah. for themselves. Yeah. Last week we talked a little bit about um, uh, John Wycliffe and uh, his translation and a few other translations. Um, uh, into into English, right? Um, but that that stuff was was put down by the Catholic Church um, because they didn't want it. They just wanted it in Latin, you know. But so this was revolutionary, translating the Bible into the common language. So yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. And and as you see, even though he's one of the key figures that kind of kicked this off, he was not the only. A major player within the Reformation, but he is kind of the person who empowered uh, these other peoples to start standing up for these components of theology. Absolutely, um, I, I would say that in in the grand scheme of things, Martin Luther is one of the most important people in world history. And, and that's, that's that's a pretty large claim to make, but what he did revolutionized the world as we know it and so we this is a really important person that we need to look to in our church history really right i think too when you're looking at martin luther i think one of the coolest things is to look at his own uh, internal journey you know he was he was just so uncomfortable with the church and he was looking for peace really is what he was looking for is to to really reconcile because he knew what a sinner he was. He's like, there's no way this stuff's enough, you know? And um, when he was reading the Greek new Testament and he he realized the word righteousness doesn't just mean the condition of being righteous, but the act of declaring someone righteous, he was like, Oh, this isn't, this isn't on me. (laughs) You know, this is all the work of Christ. That's right. And, um, I just, I just think it's really cool to watch his internal journey. Right. One other thing that I would point out that um, you skimmed over that's not that important but is funny, and um, I just think people should know about it. You mentioned the meeting where he was called in, and they're like, hey, delete your tweets, you know, shut down your Twitter account. Um, back then, the the word for a meeting was diet, and, he, and they had that meeting in a town called Worms. Yeah, the Diet so of Worms. Diet of Worms. It and just, I just sounds funny. That that's just too funny to pass up right there. Right. Which, which, and, and our last name is Grubs, which is also of German descent. So I, I don't know what's with the Germans and Worms and Grubs and hey, stuff. Hey, Mock, my last name, Mock, that's, that's also German descent. So. Yeah. So... Uh, that's that's that is really interesting. Um, I think it's just funny to watch how this guy was a total savage. Like he didn't care. Like he really was very bold in, in what he did. He he even at one point um, in 1522. So this would have been about five six years after he had nailed the 95 theses. And you said a year after that, 
All right, we have the Diet of Worms. So then, like four years after that, after right. he's correction, di- the Diet of Worms was in in 1521. 1521. So yeah. this would have been a year after the Diet of Worms. What I'm what I'm about to refer to. He actually secretly went back to Wittenberg, which is where he had been kind of banned from being, and started preaching uh, to essentially any of the people that he had ministered to before, because he wanted. But it was all in secret. He was kind of in hiding as he was doing this. Um, and that was one of the the many things he did as his ministry continued after, even after he was told not to. But really, our our the kind of church structure that we have nowadays um, and our theology, um, it, it wouldn't be what it is today without what he did. Yeah. Now... Ryan, I'm going to point out an interesting objection I get often to Reformation, Reformed theology, and, and, and the, 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 the key players in the Reformation. People like John Calvin, Martin Luther, who had uh, a significant influence. Um, people like to point out their flaws. And they did have flaws. Right. Um, that sometimes they were violent, they would speak, um, they would discriminate against other people, Martin Luther, Luther, Luther drank too much, Luther, Martin Luther drank too much, and, um, was told to, to, was, some people accuse him of being sort of anti-Semitic towards some of his later teachings, um, and then, uh, John Calvin, uh, it has been accused of condoning violent acts throughout the Reformation, and how do we respond to people like this? Okay, so Martin Luther was, if you read some of his literature, he was anti-Semitic towards Jews. Um, and also John Calvin, he, uh, he uh, one, of his, one of his accusations against him was uh, his, the execution of Michael Servetus, mm-hmm. I think you pronounce his last name. Um, and those are serious flaws but we have to understand the context of the time i mean these people are products of their time period and so it's it i think it's dangerous for us to judge them by our standards when we can't when we don't take into account the climate that they lived in um so like i don't know like like martin luther's anti-semitism i mean Everybody was back then, and that's not to say that's right, but it's just to say it's like there's a bigger context to it. I don't know Johnny may be able to have a better answer to this, but I know for specifically for the John Calvin one, um, Michael Servetus, what he was preaching was not only a threat to John Calvin's ministry, but was really a threat to John Cal uh, to the to the basically the government that John Calvin was running. Um, Back in uh, in in Geneva, um, religion and politics and the government were very closely tied. So any threat to uh, your religion was also a threat to the government. Mm-hmm. And so, really, if we understand that context, Michael Servetus was not only so a heretic, but also a threat to to Geneva. And so that puts it that gives it a new perspective that we need to think about. Right. Um, and while it doesn't justify his actions, we do have to understand that from, from their perspective, this really was wartime. John Calvin had seen many of his friends and other important players in the Reformation uh, be burned at the stake, thrown in jail, beaten, killed, whatever, persecuted uh, for teaching what they taught. Yes. And so uh, this, I think, in, in many ways was probably reactionary to some of what he had seen. Yeah. Johnny, do you have any words on that? Well, I just what I discovered is if you look at the scope of church history, I mean, even going back just before the Reformation with the Catholic Church, and, and we love our Catholic brothers, but at the same time, there's a lot that we see that's a problem with that. And But I still believe that even in the midst of all the lies that people were being told and stuff like that, that there were saved people among the Catholics, that there, there still are to this day, but there was a lot of stuff that was messed up. Then you get to the Reformation, and we have this enlightenment, but then still people are messed up. And if you keep tracing church history all the way through, there's not a time period. Even I mean, 
just look at modern evangelicalism. <laughs> There's a lot of people that we respect that have issues. There's a lot of people that have serious issues that we don't respect at all that are crazy uncles in evangelicalism. Just because somebody's not all the way there, you know, in terms of their belief doesn't mean God isn't using them to usher in enlightenment within the church, you know? Yeah. And so it's just not, it's just not a common, we're still seeing that today, you know, is, is what I've discovered. It's the pattern of church history. Um, and and I want I want the audience to think about something too. We we look back five hundred years uh, at at the reformers and we see their flaws. But five hundred years from now, people who look back into our history, what kind of flaws are they going to see in us? Exactly. Yeah. That that that's what I've discovered. I, I realized that um, I was I, when I was doing my church history class, I was really critical of some periods of the church, and I realized. Well, we're not doing so hot ourselves, you know. We really just have to put our our faith in, in Jesus. And I know it sounds like you know some kind of Sunday school trump card, but it, it really is the facts. We look at what people did and how God used them, and we look at their flaws and say, "Well, thank goodness for the cross," and we keep marching forward, knowing that Christ is ultimately um, going to redeem this in spite of us. Um, but I don't think that means we can just discount everything that the Lord did in them just because they had um, some shortcomings. If that was the case, no believer would be credible because we all do things that maybe we're not proud of, and, and yet we still uh, want to have influence. So um, I just think that's been the pattern. And, right, you know. and I, I think that goes back even before church history, even back to biblical history. You look at the patriarchs and right. uh, everybody in, in Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith, uh, they made horrible mistakes. <laughs> Yes, yeah. and they were all terribly flawed people, um, but I find that God chooses to use us not even in spite of our weaknesses, but actually because of it. Because in our weakness, His strength is magnified, and the yeah. fact that He can use flawed and broken people to accomplish His purpose and have this great influence on um, history, not not just for Christians. That's and that's the thing I think you were getting at earlier, and we'll get into our last episode of the month is that the Reformation has influenced not just Christianity and religion, but all of history. Um, and, and yes, God does use flawed people to accomplish those purposes. So, uh, the next episode is going to be the theology of the Reformation. We're going to dig a little bit deeper into what they taught. We're going to talk about the five solas. Nice. And it's going to be great. Um, and then the final episode... Uh, will be the effects of the Reformation today. What significance does it have for us today? Uh, so, keeping that in mind, that we are going to dig into those things in later episodes, are there any other final thoughts for today's episode that you guys have? Regarding Martin Luther and kind of the events of the Reformation. No. No? I'm, I'm satisfied. Yeah, um, if, if 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 the audience is like, mm, I want I want more. Like, why don't you guys talk about this thing or that thing? Stay tuned for the rest of the series because we may talk about it. And also do your own research because there's so much history in the Reformation. There's so much to talk about. Um, there's no way in four podcasts that we could do it justice. Yeah, and there's so many figures in the Reformation history. You, you get John Calvin and and all sorts of other people. Uh, worth studying about, um, and and you really should because you know, we we stand on the shoulders of giants, and so we should study them. Absolutely, Johnny. Do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I would just say you know, in the midst of all the history and all the things and the events that happened, it's just if you ever study up on Martin Luther, or even if you listen to this podcast and think about his life, um, just pay attention to what I mean. I'm in a spiritual formation and the spiritual application. Um, just, I, I think that Martin Luther's journey mirrors a lot of our own. We may not be under the oppression of, you know, uh, a, a church that's lying or trying to sell us our salvation, literally, you know, with monetary price. But I think a lot of us do struggle to believe that God could really love us by faith alone. You know, that we, that we could just have faith in him and then be, you know, um, be accepted, you know, by grace. And so, um, I think I think I see a lot of my own journey to believe in, in God's love for me and Martin Luther, and that ultimately led to his peace. So there's so there's a huge spiritual application there as well, and what Martin Luther discovered about the words righteousness and salvation 
um, that we can take away. And that, like like uh, Ryan said, that that influence, you know, affected the church for for generations since. And I definitely encourage people to to maybe get a biography on Martin Luther or something to really dig into it because the personal aspect of his spiritual journey I think is right. really powerful and it's something that we can all relate to because even in his very early life, he because of the teaching of the Catholic Church, felt like he had to do, do, do these good deeds to um, to earn God's approval and favor. and But it never added up for him. And he was really tortured by this emotionally and spiritually in his early life. So these theological discoveries, it wasn't just a head knowledge. It was a very personal and intimate experience for him. Um, yeah, it was quite the opposite of a head knowledge thing. I mean, it was a revelation. You know, the church was lying. But something deep happened within his spirit. That's why he was so passionate. He's like, we missed the whole boat, you know, in terms of the uh, salvation. So. Right. And it's interesting to watch that essentially the things that they were getting wrong, this idea of a works-based religion, was something that Paul was warning against all the way back in his epistles for the early church. Um, and it's something that we even need to be careful of today. Yep. Yeah, you yeah, yeet, yeah, yeet. So yeah, we have a couple more episodes coming up in this Reformation series, and then uh, we have a special guest coming for a Halloween episode. Mac Ralston will be coming uh, to Magic join Mac. us to talk about Magic Mac and Cheese. Uh, we'll be uh, exploring uh, the history of Halloween, and, and is it okay for Christians to watch horror movies? Mm, question mark, question mark. Question mark, question mark. So Only if they're made by Ted Decker or Frank Peretti. Okay, uh, you're not on that episode then. <laughs> Theology kidding. Thursday uh, is available on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Spotify, Spotify, the Google Play Store, YouTube, Spotify, Spotify. pretty much any place that you find podcasts, Spotify. we're there. Then, you can click on Spotify. Uh, we, you should follow us on Twitter. Uh, we're going to start posting the 95 Theses. Uh, we're, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Uh, we need to start a MySpace because I know we're missing a huge demographic there. Um, Google Plus. We, we need to get on Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we uh, do encourage you to connect with us on social media. And if you have a question that you want answered regarding the church or the Bible, then please send it into Theology Thursday Podcast at gmail dot com. We hope to hear from you next week, and we hope that you have a fantastic and safe week. Thank you for listening to Theology Thursday. Y'all eat. <laughs>